thank you so much for the time today, sir. It's a pleasure to chat with you. You too. Thanks for having me. So, you know, before we get into anything too spoilery, I just want to start off with kind of a more general question. Uh, you know, this episode is all about Miguel. It's it's obviously it it's it's Miguel. That's the episode name. I mean, it, it, it's yeah. summed up right there. The the question I had is, did you know a lot of what was coming for him in this episode before, or did you learn about a lot about him in this episode? I mean, I think I knew uh, quite a bit. We've been uh, talking about who Miguel is uh, for years, uh, what has shaped him. Um, and uh, when we were starting to uh, conceive the episode, break the episode, I was invited into the writer's room by Dan to you know, talk to the writers. And um, of course, anything that Dan and I and Isaac and Elizabeth that I had talked about over the years, bring a, as much of that uh, into the episode as, as, as I could to writers that may not have uh, been privy to our conversations. Um, and a lot of writers had some their, of their own ideas, which were surprising. And I loved everything we talked about. I thought, wow, man, if we, if we could get all of this into the episode, how amazing would that be? But I thought three of these things will end up in the episode because we only have 42 minutes. And somehow Johnny Gomez was able to literally take all of that information and string it together in such a beautiful way that uh, he, he basically captured everything that, that I talked about, that Dan had talked about, that the writers uh, who had ideas had talked about and the, the ideas that Johnny himself had. Uh, and this, and it is just such an amazing, amazing amalgamation of, you know, of every, aspect of Miguel's life um, coming to a head and, and explaining uh, this is who he is and why 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 he participates in the in the Pearson family the way that he does whether it's uh, with a heavy hand whether it's uh, stepping back and, and 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 letting things unfold as they as they need to it really uh, I thought that Johnny did a beautiful job and I love the way the story paints a picture of someone who wants to be there every moment for his wife. I mean, I, I think it's it's a beautiful the the challenge of the family deciding, you know, trying to help, I guess, and and Miguel's decisions about where he wants to be in that relationship. You know, when when we're coming into this episode and what we find out, where would you say he is, I guess, at the start of that? Are you talking about the conversation that they have in the living room saying, let us take care of you? Um, yeah. Or, or, yeah. So I think that, um, well, where he is there is, you know, he still thinks that he is the best uh, person to be doing all of these things because he knows that no one uh, loves and cares for this woman and knows the, the uh, day in and day out uh, mundane things that have to be done for for her in her um you know, in in the in the status that she's in, I mean, she's uh, he's he's firsthand seeing the decline uh, every day. He knows exactly uh, what the changes are, and so he feels there's no one better than than Miguel to um, to be there for her. Uh, and and he's de he's absolutely devoted to her based on how he saw his mother take care of his aunt, um, and 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 what his mother said to him about uh, you know you know love has no bounds. It's, it's unconditional. And, um, it's, it, you can't fight that, uh, you know, basically. And, and so, um, and it's, and it's, you know, living like, like, you know, or, or doing for someone, um, with no, no need for reward, no need for, um, uh, just, just doing for someone because you, you have this unconditional connection and love with this person. I think that that's where he is. And, you know, the idea of letting go of any of that scares him because he think, he he sees the decline. He knows the connection they have. He knows that when he's not in the room that she freaks out, right? So he feels that if he pulls back at all, he the, the, he's going to lose, a, you know, much of his wife. And so he resists um, outside help because he doesn't want any slippage. He doesn't want any any disconnection from reality because ultimately he doesn't want her to forget about him and, and, um, and not realize who he is. 
So he's got to be there every second, every moment, every day. It's it's told so beautifully. I mean, even the scene outside where she steps outside and he finds her there. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's amazing to see this journey. On the other side of this is the father-son dynamic. And it works both ways, both with his father and his son. Uh, you know, can you talk a little bit about how you how you envisioned his relationship with his father? You know, I, uh, I mean, I always thought um, that Miguel was way different than his father. Um, Miguel has these ambitions that come from a sense of assimilation, uh, the need for assimilation. And, uh, you know, Miguel's father, we always knew that he had come to the States, uh, to the mainland from Puerto Rico to, to, to create a better life for his own family, which is exactly what Miguel is trying to do by working so hard uh, to climb that corporate ladder, to fit in, to uh, to um, you know be a part of American like you know success, that American success story, uh, to get a piece of that, um, but to his own detriment, he went too hard. He leaned too hard into it and created a rift between he and his own son and his family. Uh, much like his own father did. His own father created a rift between uh, Miguel and him because, um, you know, as much as he wanted Miguel to succeed, uh, he saw Miguel losing a part of himself and, or, or ignoring a part of himself and running away from a part of himself, um, something Miguel thought he was encouraged to do. So I think it all comes down to um, uh, the lack of communication between people who love each other. And I think that's something that uh, we can take away from this episode and many episodes of This Is Us, uh, going all the way back to the beginning, is that if you fail to communicate with, with the people you love, uh, things are going to get um, bottled up. Things are going to uh, get pushed down until uh, one day they explode. And then it cr could create a rift if you can't get past that with, again, communication and love. And so um, that's the fault of our, um, you know, to of our society and kind of our, uh, you know, uh, in, a, in my culture, machismo. Uh, in uh, American culture, the, uh, you know, the, the idea of what a man is, you know, and, and uh, you know, John Wayne set the precedent back in the 70s, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, this is a man, man doesn't show his feelings, a man doesn't talk about uh, uh, what he's missing in life. Um, and, and he doesn't want to hear that there are problems, he'll, because if there are problems, I'm working on it. I'm fixing it. So it's, you know, it's that perpetual thing. And I think now with our show, especially we can show if you do talk about it, if you do put your feelings on your sleeve and you say, this is what I need. This is what you, I, I tell me what you need and let's work together to just share uh, love and to support each other and to, um, you know, prop each other up when they, when they need it to, to reach back and pull someone out of a, a hole when they get into it. Um, and to, you know, just tell someone like, Hey, uh, this is this is what I need from you. Can you give it to me? And I'll and I'll do the same for you. And I I love that he gets a chance to have something that that he didn't get with his father, but he gets it with his son. Essentially, by the end of the episode, it's it's a beautiful moment. I love the way that the family helps make that happen, kind of thing. Yeah, it, it comes down to Kevin. I mean, Kevin, and I feel like it's a it's a there was a little bit of a transformation and a change in Kevin in this episode with how he sees Miguel and how he wants Miguel to, um, to live out his days as he ages. You know, if I, if he's giving up this position of taking care of Rebecca um, to the kids um, and he's going to be kind of missing something maybe in, in his life, uh, what I think Kevin decides I, I could give him this, I can do this for him. Let me just try. Um, because Kevin think probably is thinking back to like, hey man, I haven't always been uh, the best stepson to Miguel, so maybe this is a, a nice uh, gesture I can make, and hopefully make up for it, and see if I can you know um, reconnect these two. And he did. I love also the first date with Rebecca that we finally get to see, kind of what brought them together, and that whole, I mean, the Facebook thing and everything. It's so relatable, and it's so. Uh, I mean, kind of meet cute in a way. Uh, yeah. What is she like as a scene partner and to work with her, especially through 
these different stages of their lives? I mean, Mandy, uh, I, I say it all the time. She's the best scene partner I've ever had. She um, is generous as a scene partner. She is present. She uh, gives you 100% whether she's on camera or not. Mm -hmm. uh, she, um, and she's just, you know, there's a warmth and a, uh, you know, a connection uh, that she brings to the other, to, to, you know, to the other side of the scene that uh, draws you in and it makes you want to make something beautiful with her. Uh, uh, these scenes that we, that we've done, it's, it's just, I, you know, I know that I don't, whatever I'm doing that she's saving the scene. And that, and so all I have to do is kind of like allow myself to be in it with her uh, basically. But she's just wonderful, and and, uh, and we've great chemistry uh, on and off camera. And uh, you know, we, my wife and, and her husband, and the four of us will hang out sometimes, and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's always fun. And so we're, you know, she's not only a great scene partner, but she's now a great friend. And I think mm -hmm. um, something that's it's it's a, a great takeaway from this job. Well. You know, before I get to something else, I'll just ask one more thing kind of around that. What's it been like working with this cast? Because you go through quite a few eras of their lives and it, it's it's something to see how they relate to each other in, in different times. What was that like to work with all of them? Uh, it's great. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, all of them, are, they're like a family mm -hmm. at, at this point to me. Um, we, uh, we have a great time working because we know that we're telling somewhat heavy stories sometimes, but between uh, the scenes when we're, when we're not shooting and we're, you know, waiting for them to set up cameras and lights, we are laughing our asses off. I mean, it, it, it's probably one of the funniest groups of people that I've ever been around. And, um, you know, I would say that this cast is, the most generous cast that I've ever worked with. They've given so much to me in so many different ways. Um, and they, uh, and it, I mean, you can, I can sit in awe of them because of their talent, because of their hearts and go, wow, man, this is a once in, you know, this could be a once in a lifetime thing for me. And I know it happens on other shows and other movies and things like that, where these, uh, you know, beautiful casts are put together and everyone uh, is, super super good at what they do uh they have big hearts they 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 uh get along they, and they and they have fun and they make something beautiful uh but you know you don't it's not every it's not every job that an actor gets so i think you know this might be a once in a lifetime thing so I cherish it i cherish every moment i get to spend with these these castmates of mine well this might be a mundane question but what is it like playing these different ages for the character because it is remarkable how you can look at him in one scene and and you know you can tell he's young and and just the way you have all worked as a team to make the aging process look so natural uh you know what was was that hard work what was that like for you you know uh i mean first of all the hair and makeup department you gotta have to, we have to give it up to them they i mean the hours that we spend together, um, you know, I think I have as much of a connection with the hair and makeup department as I do with the actors, because I may have spent more time with them than I have with the actors. Because <laughs> I mean, sometimes we'll spend four hours in makeup and I'll have only one scene that day mm -hmm. and I'll go shoot that scene. I've only spent, you know, an hour with the cast, but I spent four hours with the hair and makeup team and an hour getting it off. Um, so yeah, I spent a lot of time with them. So they're, uh, instrumental in, in basically making us look that way and looking that way helps us feel that way. Uh, mm -hmm. I think a lot. And, you know, Mandy and I did at the very, very beginning of this, we talked about what, you know, what, when we first were put in, in the, uh, elder makeup, we were like, well, what, what is it, what is it going to look like to be the older version of ourselves? And, you know, I come from this, you know, comedy background, working with the groundlings and stuff like that. And, you know, you do characters and, you, you know, when you're trying to be, especially when you're doing comedy, you do the extreme version of a character. So the, sh the shaky voice and the, hey, come here, young man, I want to show you something. You know, you do that. And you're like, is that what I'm doing right now? And you decide no, because that's the that's the, the character version. What is who what am I going to be like when I'm older? You really have to kind of look into the future 
and look at people around you and, and the people that um, I think about my, my grandfather. I think about, you know, just uh, the, some of the people that I've respected and, and, and um, you know, learned from in my life. And it, it ended up being very easy to, to play the older version, which was you slow down, you take your time because, you know, you don't have as much. Uh, as when you are 25 years old, you take your time looking at things, you take your time saying things, you take your time answering questions, you, uh, you listen more. Uh, and I think that's what we decided to do is just slow down. You take your time getting up because you don't want to, you know, throw your back, your knee or your hip out, you know, you say, if you just take your time, you're more careful, right? Uh, so then when you, when we have to go back and play 25, which was a long time ago, um, you, you let that, what you're doing as the uh, elder version of you, you let that inform, well, when I was 25, man, I wanted life to happen now. Let's go, let's keep moving. Let's, I, I wanna be like, I wanna be on the other side of the field at, in, in 30 seconds. Like I want, like you want everything uh, right away. And so you move fast, you talk fast, you have all this energy. Uh, and so you just, Amp that up a little bit when you're playing like younger. You amp up the energy, and you also your your you know your eyes are brighter and wider. Like everything is new to you, right? You're learning. So when you're learning, you know your 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 eyes are brighter. You know, and you're and you're um you're you're a sponge. So, you know, what does a sponge look like? What does a sponge feel like? So you start like just bringing those kind of physical things into it. Well, two last questions. One is okay. You know, as you're coming to the end of this season. What do you feel that this season or even across the whole series gave you a chance to play in Miguel? What was, what was your big takeaway, I guess, of, of playing him? I mean, I guess, you know, playing Miguel to me uh, has been this almost uh, thankless character, mm -hmm. which, um, which at the beginning people didn't understand the character, didn't necessarily like the character. And the challenge of that as an actor, because you, you know, you are taught, even if you're playing a, a villain, that you you should be a likable character. You want people, if you're a villain, you want people to love to hate you, right? So they love you because they hate you. Uh, and when you're playing the the hero, you want to be the, you know, you want to of course be the hero, you know, that, that they love to root for. Uh, and so for me, the challenge from the beginning when there was this, you know, adverse reaction to Miguel and Rebecca walking through that door, uh, to turn people around, it's, we did it. I think uh, we turned enough of the audience around where they're going to uh, really um, miss the character of Miguel when the show is done. Well, this is, this is a beautiful episode. It is. It is stunning in how well it encapsulates his life. It's 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 really oh, well told. Thank you, man. Well, the last thing I want to ask you is about uh, the uh, Somos Nosotros Fund. Uh, the, yeah. The, the This Is Us Fund that you, you've you all kind of worked together on. What was yeah. the genesis of this and what was, what was your hope for it? You know, I think we all, you know, this show has been a gift to us and we've received many gifts um, along the way when it comes to uh, the show. And we as a cast wanted to kind of go into the future um, somehow connected and locked together and have some sort of um, legacy for the show. And so that's why, you know, uh, I, you know, we, we decided, you know, maybe we're gonna give something to charity. Um, mm -hmm. But then I thought, what you know, for me personally, um, I haven't seen a lot of uh, directors who look like me on the other side of the camera in television. I've, been, I've, I've seen one in my career, uh, which is over 400 episodes of televisions. Um, I've, uh, you know, writers in the writer's room, I think, is where we as a Latinx uh, community kind of need uh, people to step up into those positions. And so I, I talked to them about this and they and we decided, like, well, let's. Let's do something for the next batch of writers so that they can write more stories and become uh, showrunners, uh, executives, directors, um, and give them a leg up when they go into their 
into their careers, not having this mound of debt. So um, why don't we do that for someone? And so we created, and I've been working with Nosotros, the organization for uh, a couple of years now, and I really respect what they do. Uh, their president, Jolyn Gonzalez, has some amazing, amazing ideas for initiatives. And so I thought, well, why don't I talk to him and and see if we can um, create a scholarship, which is which translates, because I didn't know, you know, I don't want to, Fox or NBC or Dan Fogelman owns the name, this is us. So I was like, well, if we say it in Spanish, they don't own that. Let's just make it, say it in Spanish. And then it really is a nod to that hope that we find a Latinx candidate through AFI, American Film Institute, uh, who's going through their masters and find that person and give them a leg up and, and shoot them out into the into the business and see if they can if they, if they can be then a writer in my writer's room, you know, on the next show that I'm on. That's what I'm hoping. I'm just I'm just trying to get myself a job next. So I said, let's make <laughs> let's, let's find a writer that benefited from us. So I can say, hey, you're a writer because of, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but that would be, you know, it would be that would be phenomenal to actually uh, end up, um, you know, working on a project for a writer who, mm. you know, uh, took advantage of this scholarship that we created. That's amazing. Well. I, I can't wait to see who comes out of it. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens. And thank Me you too. so much for the time. The episode was amazing. Your journey through this series has been awesome to watch. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for having me. 